Greetings, my children! Last year we took a break from talking about it, but it's back again! The finest in illustrated horror! Creepy. We started things off with the scales. Jillian is a teenage girl about to undergo puberty. Her family has run the town for hundreds of years, and while her father doesn't think her art career will get her anywhere, he does make sure she does odd jobs and chores for their neighbor, Miss Shafrau. In particular, she helps prepare meals and drawings for Jeffrey, Miss Shafrau's son, whom she never sees. She suspects, especially after she sees a transient toy car in her garbage, that she's actually feeding people to Jeffrey, that he must be some kind of deformed monster. Well, she's half right. You see, as she starts developing strange warts on her arm, Miss Chauffrau finally shows her Jeffrey, and indeed he is suffering from some mutations and deformities. But while they do feed transients to him, in reality, Jeffrey is Jillian's brother. Yes, as her father reveals, he and Miss Chauffrau are brother and sister, and Jillian's mother. They've been inbred for hundreds of years, and most of the time mutations and birth defects are kept under control, but occasionally when puberty hits, they become like Jeffrey. And clearly it's happening to her too, so they will have to leave her and Jeffrey together, so they can start their own little family locked away in the basement. They call it balancing the scales, although Jillian at least sees that Jeffrey is kinder to her than her parents. Next up is The Prospector. Ha! Wordplay! I love it. It's a very short story about a prospector who used to come back from his trips with saddles full of gold. After he died, many tried to find the rich vein that he had located, but none ever returned. One such pansifter comes across the prospector's ghost, who keeps proclaiming that he wants his gold dust. He's chased into a cave! where the bones of the prospector's horse rise up. Yes, it seems the ghost just wanted his horse, named Gold Dust, before he passed on. Although, as this new gold seeker observes, if the ghost just wanted his horse, what happened to the others who came looking for gold? Well, perhaps you can ask that monstrosity about to attack you. Continuing on, we have The Last Stop. A kind woman named Crystal gets on a subway train, along with many other people. This train is special. It's called a Redbird, usually run on special occasions. Her fellow passengers are not so kind, mean to their children, pushy, declaring that people should be nuked. And as the train begins going out of control, several are killed as it moves. The conductor of the train is dead. Long dead at that, and they cannot escape thanks to the half-deceased giant rats ready to devour anyone who steps off. Eventually, they reach the last stop. Hell itself! Crystal believes that she's done something terrible, that she deserves being here, and that the train won't be happy until it gets what it wants. Her! And yet, she survives while the rest are burned in a giant oven. Whatever crime she committed that got her here is left to the reader's imagination. For when she arrives back in the train station, a whole new flock of people arrive and keep her from getting off before it starts moving again. Next up is an adaptation of a Bram Stoker tale. Not Dracula, but... Well, the title is a slur against Native Americans, and we will not be repeating it on my show. And if you have a problem with me not wanting to repeat it... You're really going to argue with the undead ghoul who delights in dead things about what he will and won't say on his show. Anyway, in Nuremberg, a couple meets up with an American tourist named Elias P. Hutchison. Along a castle wall, they spot a black cat and her kitten playing at the base of the castle. Deciding to confuse and frighten the animals, Hutchison drops a stone down, intending to make the cats wonder where the stone came from, but instead the stone hits the kitten and kills it. The black cat stares at Hutchison in anger, a look that reminds it of a time when an Apache woman's own child was killed and her tribe managed to capture the murderer and gave him over to her. And no man ever before took so long to die. Hutchison recounts how they found the man too late, 
and that the woman was smiling when he killed her. Hutchison does not fear the cat after a light facing much more terrifying foes, and they proceed on their tourism to our torture tower. They find the famous Iron Maiden of Nuremberg, its door so heavy that it requires a chain pulley system to open it, lest its weight come slamming down on whomever is so unfortunate as to be put inside. Hutchison, wanting a bit of a thrill, bribes the tour guide to let him inside, and even be tied up and let the spike slowly descend toward him. And that's when the cat strikes! Not at Hutchison, but at the tour guide, making him release the chain pulley as the Iron Maiden slaps shut and kills him. Her vengeance attained. Revenge is a dish best served overly elaborate and convenient. And our final story, Deal Xing or Crossing. A pair of drunken idiots are driving along a dark freeway road when they swerve out of the way of a deer and instead hit another deer with large antlers. The car is wrecked, but they realize the deer must be in much worse shape, having crawled into the forest to die. Deciding to put it out of its misery, they follow the trail, one recounting the story about an abandoned church that fits the description of one they find at the end of the trail. After the congregation turned its back on the church, all sorts of bad things moved into it, and that it's best to stay away. There were markers left to warn people off, but they saw no such markers in there. But they soon realized that said markers were pulled down. For you see, it wasn't a deer they hit, but a satyr, and the rest of its congregation have found them. Creepy's tagline as the best of illustrated horror continues to ring true, be it stories of revenge or just the creepy terrors of everyday life. <laughs>